Welcome to uh, to this Rivers um, Rivers in Focus uh, Q and A session. It's following on from the last one by Col Easton. That was uh, on on how to clear the catchment. So we're now talking about um, uh, rivers and their importance within the catchment. Now, the, the the talk was to be done by by Sarah Chapman, but um, she was unable to make it. So I put up my hand and said, I'll do it. I'm Tim Watts with the local land services, and I've enlisted the help of my mate. Steve Eccles, who's a consultant from um, from Scone. We've both got a background in soil conservation, I think back in the 1980s, I think we both started. It's fair to say we're, we're both very keen on erosion issues, but but passionate about our rivers, Stephen. Very passionate about our rivers, yes, that's right. Yeah. right. So, look, I think we should get right into this. We've got a series of, uh, of photographs to talk to over the next 20 minutes, starting with this uh, picture supplied by my mate Angela in Gunnedah, and what a picture it is, Stephen. A picture tells a thousand words, and I don't know how we're going to get a thousand. Well, I reckon a couple of thousand in that, Steve. What do you think? Well, there would be, but we've got to go through it uh, very succinctly in their time period. So we've got a picture in front of, sort of the catchment with the range, the Liverpool range, I believe. It is indeed. Um, yeah. Just in the, uh, in the distance there, and um, over there is uh, the Hunter area there, which I uh, reside in there and done most of my environmental and land management work over the years there so we've got this one here and that and we could see in the foreground is a riparian river system there uh well forested there and uh between the range and the river system we've got the uh the catchment uh going there sloping there and even into areas of floodplain areas around the riparian uh vegetated now steve system. what is fascinating about this is where you are you head off over to Newcastle. We're going to talk about that later, about how you've got oodles of money to do work in your river system. On our side here, this all goes down to South Australia. Now, in starting to talk about this catchment, I think it's worth mentioning that this whole area is Gomilaroi country, and, and we'll just sort of pay our respects to, to, to elders past, present and future. They had a tremendous sort of history through here, and things were quite different in their stage. Now, what I'd really like to say about this, this catchment, I mean, you look at just the river itself, but imagine, you know, we've just had uh, 120 millimetres of rain, just lands in that catchment. Now, in the past, that sort of used to act like a big sponge up in the top of the catchment. And you imagine a sponge getting that water in, and then over time, it just sort of seeps out into that drainage line coming down through here. Now, if we do away with that sponge, you know, we, we, we just change the whole system. Now, Steve, you would have seen uh, in the time that you've been working, the changes that have taken place, particularly in this upper catchment area. You know, it, it, we're now getting far more runoff than, than we had before. But the, yep. what I'd like to pose is, is what is a river to you? You know, everybody, depending where they live, they've got different aspects of, um, of, of, of what a river is. And invariably, a lot of people just think about this sort of channel down through here. Well, it's it's the whole system, uh, Tim. Is is the 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 riparian area? The river system is the the major aorta artery of the catchment, and you, you should. And what happens in there, uh, in the catchment, as is a direct result of the health and the well-being and the sustainability of the river system. See, so I like that artery system. I reckon I reckon there's a lot to be said about seeing that sort of lifeblood of the system as we go. Because that, you know, you think of that as the artery. Well, you know, it, it actually up into the catchment, you've got you've got veins, Stephen. You've got veins up there going into capillaries. You know, you've got that whole connectivity of the system coming through. Yeah, that's right. We've we've got the uh, you've got the major artery, which it, which as you go up through the river system into the catchment, there you've got the arteries going to the small arteries into the capillary system, and probably even like the cells which would be the individual landscapes. And I like that, Stephen. I like building up the body of the argument through there. But, uh, and, and following through that, as you come down the catchment and it builds up, I, I, I just can't overestimate, um, emphasise the importance of the floodplain areas. That's these areas. Where's my cursor? There it is. Around, you know, people just see the river and there's a beautiful billabong through here, Stephen, and yeah. it's a bit of a, a flood flow through there. Yeah. But it's these areas aside of that, which are so important to the river system. Yeah. And people seem to ignore that, saying, well, right oh, let's just sort of, um, we'll cultivate those, and uh, that's not really part of the river system. But as far as the riparian zone goes, 
those floodplains, now following along this idea of, of arteries and capillaries, these would be these would be the cleansing areas. That's where they get all the nutrient that flows into the river. So I, I, I'm going to label those, which I think people have done before. I'm going to call them as the liver of the system, I think, Stephen. These these side areas by the side of it are so essential to it. They're the healthy the healthy cleansing system of of the air. Um, Tim, just just I've been doing a fair bit of inf, uh, work in the Hunter, as you know, and look even in the steep Barrington Tops areas of river systems there. So just remember the replenishing system in there, especially uh, in the last few years, you're losing thirty percent of the water from the catchment, which, which must go into the interconnecting floodplains there to replenish those systems, which would include the, the things for the people's uh, stock and domestic and also irrigation uh, um, bores around the place. So, and that's in those sort of things. Obviously, in a vast system which goes to, uh, to uh, South Australia, in these drought times there, you, you often would be losing you would be getting replenishment of the system as you go down and, and probably even 100% of the water needs to be replenished into that system before you, in certain areas, to keep the flow going into the lower areas. So that's so important, you know. There's, um, uh, we talk about that sponge effect and slowing the water down. That's, all, that's what it's all about, slowing it down as much as possible to get that infiltration uh, occurring. And that all comes back, and if people want to Google the, the thought of the impact of a raindrop hitting the ground, you know, do that now, and that's where it all starts. So, you know, we're really going to push the concept of, of ground cover. Getting back to what a, um, what, what a river is to you. Now, I used to do a lot of work with the, when we used to do the property planning, which was on the radio this morning. You're still doing it, would you believe, Steve? Cole Easton, who did the clearing talk before us, he started that and we did it for about 20 years and I used to do the riparian side and you'd invariably end up next to a dry gully with a group of school kids and talking about rivers and so I used to start by getting them to stand there, try and get them quiet and you're saying to just close your eyes and imagine you're by the side of a river. Of course, you know, and, and you'd have to say, now, what are you seeing? I knew they had their eyes closed, I knew that, they yeah. knew that, but they had to use their imagination. What are you hearing? Now, over those 20 years, a lot of, um, there was a lot of consistency. You know, all those rivers that they saw had water in. They mm. had clean water. Yeah. They yeah. had fish. True. They had trees. You know, they, mm. they, they were there for recreation. It was a dynamic system, a sustainable system. Now, not once did I ever hear that uh, they thought the river should have been a supply channel for downstream irrigation or mm. the uh, repository of sewerage from the local town. Now, that just didn't appear in what people wanted as far as their their healthy river system. Tim, Tim, I would think if they closed their ears, they would have heard the water flowing through the system, the, the bubbling of the water, the ripples effect in there, which is aerating the water as they goes over the cobblestones and in the bed of the, the creeks. They would have heard the, 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 the birds and the, uh, the insects making noises in there, and they would have made a picture in their own mind of what the river system I'm would there be. now. I yeah. can see it. Yeah. Oh, you do that beautifully. The, 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 Steve, the, that was... Oh. If the, you can hear a yeah. river, it's healthy, is, a, is what they want. The wind in the start. trees, the wind, the wind in, oh. in, the, in, in the... And you didn't say wind in the willows. Good on you, matey, because you come from the Hunter <laughs> and you've got a big history there. Yeah, we're Look, trying to eradicate them. We, well, this slide is just so fascinating, but what a river is to us, really, and this, this is a... I reckon this is a pretty key point. To us, a river is an indicator of the health of the catchment. It's a litmus. It's a litmus. A li I like that, the litmus. That's right. That, it, that's it. just like putting your toe in the river and seeing what it's like, and it's good if there's sort of water in there. Yes. So, look, that, that's um, that's a pretty good slide to start with, I think. Now, mm. just so the, the next slide that um, that uh, that Pip's put together for us, and she's done a very good job at this. She's got us a, a bit of a riparian zone here. The riparian just uh, riparian just means of the river. Wonderful term. That's, um, yeah. Uh, so what would you call a repairing zone? How how wide would you go? It varies on every oh, size of the river, wouldn't it? So, to make that yeah. I've just made it bigger there, Steve. Yeah. So now yeah. the repairing zone is bigger because yeah. I've pressed the magnifying glass. Yes. yes. Look, that's a that's that's a good good question because it does vary mm. as to where you are in the catchment. Now the uh, what, the riparian zone really is from ridge to ridge because as you get further down the catchment, it includes the kidneys. Yes. Not the kidneys, the liver. The, the liver, liver. and yeah. I know it's liver because I reckon the early guys knew about that and they called 
the Liverpool planes. I reckon they knew what was going on. They, the importance of the of, of that whole floodplain area. They, they great used to, concept. Great they concept. Used to talk about. May not be accurate, but great concept. Doesn't matter about accuracy, Stephen. We're <laughs> we're trying to get people thinking about this. Yes. And the story was that there was some um, the blokes in the upper catchment had phone up and they'd say there's a flood coming. You got two weeks to shift your sheep further down, mm -hmm. and um, and that two weeks has now come down to a matter of hours. Yeah, it wouldn't be two weeks now. That's not sure. We have removed the sponge, Stephen. The sponge is gone, and mm -hmm. we've got a flush system. It's mm -hmm. oozing down yeah. here that fast, and we don't have the the buffering effect of this riparian zone. We might just have a look at this. Just uh, we've got this slide here. As we can see here, it's obviously an area. Just remember, creeks and riparian zones are different land capabilities. So. They should be treated as such for a sustainable outcome. So it doesn't mean that you plough right up to the, the river's edge. It doesn't mean you graze sustainably. Uh, no, sorry, it doesn't mean you graze continually without resting the area of, of, of the river banks and the repairing areas. It is a different system. It needs to be, that land capability must be respected or you will get degradation. Now, just a bit of history here. Now, if people are interested at all, there's, and I'll give you the reference later, Tiki Fullerton, who used to do Landline, um, yes. uh, she wrote a book um, called Watershed that was published by ABC Books. And it, it was the history of the water industry in Australia. Fascinating reading. And some real, very commonalities between a lot of concepts. So you can even see Yeomans and Peter Andrews type concepts. But basically what she's saying is the pastoral industry was based, which is common sense, before you had dozers and bores, was based around the rivers. You couldn't go more than a day or two away from the rivers. Now, if we look at this slide here, we've got lots of sedges. We haven't got any fragmites there. I love the fraggers, Steve. You can't you can't have enough fraggers, I reckon, in Well, that's, that's right. But it's, it's very healthy, just the same. Well, it's, it's, got, it's got a lot of good veg ground cover. Ground cover, Steve, yes. and that's what we've got to push. But what Tiggy was saying was, because of the intensity of the grazing, a lot of the vegetation is what held these river systems in place. Yeah. And it's, it shows yeah. on in a lot of the Aboriginal um, paintings and things yeah. where they had these yeah. sort of reed beds holding it together and, mm. and swampy meadows and all those exciting things they talk about. Yeah. Well, uh, intense grazing over 100 years or so has taken those things out. And we've got a beautiful uh, gully system at Blackwell called Cranky Dick. I'm not quite sure who he was, but that, <laughs> that basically started from stock tracks yeah. Um, uh, um, yeah. uh, in a drought and walking up a drainage line mm. and just cutting out um, an, an mm. immense incised gully. So look, this one has got a bit of diversity. You've got a, mm. The trees are pretty much the same, but when we yes. assess the riparian zone, as you were saying, we look for ground cover, we look for trees, for shrubs, and the type of, of, of ground cover. A lot of people think Kikuya is the ultimate, Stephen. Well, I'm not missing uh, Tim. Tim uh, obviously, Kaikou has got a, a place in, in certain areas there, but you know, in the riparian areas there, we're, we're looking at we're looking at riparian vegetation that do, to be uh, strong and dynamic here. So we're looking for the ground cover. We're looking for shrub layers if that's the way it, that 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 particular vegetation should be, and definitely trees. Trees in the right spots. Trees that are holding the banks together on top of the banks, uh, midway up the banks, all that. It's a combination of the three tiers of an ecosystem there, which would be ground cover, shrubs layers and canopy layers. And those three systems and the width, depending on the size of repairing, the width away from the creek and in the creek to hold it together. That's what we're looking for. And one of the indicators for that, of, of water is quantity and quality and if you've got uh, they do a thing called uh, water watch around the place which is a count of, of uh, macro invertebrates and micro invertebrates and that's that's a good sign if they if you've got that in abundance and what we said when we close our eyes and listening to the to the the, the creeks that's their good signs what it is and we want to we want to prevent, we want to prevent things like blue-green algae. We, we want to prevent things like poor water quality, lots of nutrients pouring into our river systems. And we want to make sure it can be used by not only the agricultural community, but also to the community in general. So look, that's it's so important. And just flipping back to this wonderful slide that Angela gave us first, the buffering of, um, effect that Steve mentioned, and here we've got a fairly sort of narrow, uh, but at least there is a buffer. But the other way to look at it is the length, the connectivity 
the way that it connects the very top of the catchment right the way down and that vegetation will change along the way. We've got a really good publication about the types of vegetation because a lot of people like doing revegetation in there yeah. and it's important to get the right vegetation in the right area. So we've got a couple more slides we've got yeah. to get through. So we're going to keep going. going. Yes. Just, what's the next slide? Here we go. We're looking oh, at gosh. issues that occur wow. in, in the river, okay? Now, uh, 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 what you've got to be, and, and we've emphasised, the things we've emphasised so far, Steve, are, are ground cover. We've mentioned ground cover a couple of times. Yes. And I think we should mention it a bit 70 more. 70%. So, minimum. Look, uh, uh, I reckon we go 100. Why not more? We, should, anyway. we should go 100. And yes. what sort of height should that be, Stephen? Well... It depends on a lot of the situations, but let's for grazing purposes, let's go to the the the. Uh, now, the this height. is scientific, isn't it? This, this is, is very this scientific. This is derived from the, the research station that's done. Yes, that's right. This is right here. So it's the beer can effect. So so you want to you want to stop grazing when at beer can height uh, for the connoisseurs of wine. So it's wine glass height. That's when you stop grazing in there. Give it a spell. Give it a rest. Often give it time to uh, recover. Give it time to seed down on occasions there, so you get a replenishing of the biodiversity in the in the ground cover and the species there, and you start grazing again when when you're three beer cans height or for the connoisseurs of there about a height of a a, a good a good uh, wine bottle. Yes, so I can picture that, Steve. I think that's so important. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to slow the flow down. So when we look at a and we, this is what, invariably when we get called out. If somebody's got an eroding bank like this and they say, right, I want to fix it. And, and what we're saying is that, that the river is indicator of the catchment health. So is this the cause or is this the result? Are we just putting bandages, mm. band-aids on a... I should have a band-aid. Have you got a band-aid? Well, we can put that over the slide. No, they wouldn't. I haven't got a big enough one there. Right, right, okay. Sorry, there's so, going to be a huge band-aid for this one. And if we get time, we'll talk about some of the costs because this is where... Oh, you can have great fun here. I mean, oh. it's an unbelievable cost. Yeah. But are you actually going to solve it? And my sort of, when I, what I look at when I see this, that I say, it, what, is the stream bed stable? And that's where we look at this stream bed lower. Yes. It's not like wetting the bed or anything. It's, it's yes. to do with yes. whether the, the floor of the gully is, is, is stable. And like you get a head cut, mm. which is like a little waterfall. Yes. And, and what that does is it makes the channel so much bigger. Whereas, you know, yes. a, an ordinary channel might only carry a one in two year event yeah. and then it gets out onto the floodplains. Yes. It slows down. And everything's happening. It replenishes everything. It, it replenishes everything. It does. It's a wonderful thing. I've, I've been, I tell people, if you live on a floodplain and you're not looking forward to the next flood, you probably shouldn't be there. It's a magical place to be. Absolutely. But what happens when you get this, this bed lowering occurring, the capacity of the channel increases, the energy level increases, and the erosion just you know, the amount of energy in that water when it goes a bit deeper, you just couldn't stop it. Exactly you and me right. together, we just could We wouldn't have a chance. Yeah. So in this situation here, we've got severe erosion on on that bank. Yes. It's a, this one's a bit of an outside bend. So so what's happening here, and it's it's quite common, stream bed lowering there. And look, events like even lower in the last few days around here, so you could have them going up hundreds of metres, maybe even kilometres, of the bed laying of a of stream which is unstable and with with poor vegetation, so this is often what what happens. The bed lowering there, which puts more impact on the bank system, and this this particular one we look at here, it's an outside bed which is collapsed and it's about four metres, five metres deep, yeah, I would say. Yeah, that's a bit right there, Steve. And yeah. it's very yeah. active yeah. or erosive. And all that. that sediment, all that good soil, all that stuff. All the nutrients are going and in. All that in add. the toe there, that's yep. all going to go in. Now, yep. we're, we're going to, if we get a chance, we'll talk about cost. Let's just go to the next slide. Yeah, I think it's sure. A, we can go a bit more positive with this one. Yes, that, look at this. wow, that's a good one. Let, let's make that a bit bigger. Let's, let's have a look, look at this. Have a look. We've got a very, water quality. We've got a very stable bed. Look at this bed. It's got a very stable bed. That's a cobble bed there. Now, yeah. we, don't, we don't get too many around here. Mm. Now, I'd just like mm. to mention, I was down to Barrington in your country the other day. There God's are boats country. there that God's come country. straight from the river, straight from the river, Stephen, to there, and they drink it. They drink it straight from the river. Now, you start telling people around Gunnedah to do that, and by gee, yeah. they think you were silly. Exactly. Well, you can drink out of this one. You well, could, it's, you it's clear. It's beautiful. I reckon. It's, what, it's what got all there, sorts Stephen? of a habitat there. I reckon that's a riffle. That's a riffle. And what does riffles do, Tim? Oh, oh, look, I thought you were, gonna, you were telling me. Before, oh, okay. Riffles, riffles are an essential part. They're not only do they stabilise the, the pools, which are, and you get quite different um, ecology between there, but yeah. the big thing about riffles 
is that they they they, they draw oxygen back into the water. They oxidate the thing. They, look, exactly they make the they make the, the the water lip. They bring more oxygen in there. Again, if you can hear yeah. your river, yeah. you, you know you've yeah. got a healthy if, river. If you've got ripples like that and good water quality, not too much nutrient in it, hopefully no nutrient in it, your blue green algae doesn't occur. It's all a matter of oxygenation, water quality, and movement of water. You know. Exactly, that's right. So when you yeah. get into pools, in that, in like we've had in, in the last pre few years, like in the Hunter, uh, they become putrid blue green algae mud thing, mud, mud poles there. And look, we've we lost, uh, we know we lost uh, seventy percent, eighty percent of our, our platypuses blood Glenbourne Dam in yeah, the last lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Steve, we're yes. going to very briefly talk about about um, what, what what you can do as far as um, mitigating some of that erosion. Now, you, you at one stage you used to run the, involved with the, the Hunter River Trust, um, and uh, I believe all the ratepayers contributed that uh, with the aim what to keep Newcastle Harbour free of, of silt. Yeah, it started off briefly, uh, I'll go through it, about 1955, we heard of the Maitland floods, the big floods from there. 55. 55, the, the big one. Stephen. The big one in the Hunter was the 55. Everyone, every old codger like me talks about 55. Were you born? Hey, you weren't. No, you were not quite. Quite. And me, you bugger. Oh, I, I think it might have been some older ace farmers. Right. Or um, so they knew they'd do something. It became a very denuded channel, 10 metre uh, uh deep sides of banks raiding everywhere. So what happened is they made it in the uh, Hunter Valley Trust, which uh, the rate payers, I think it's about 0.2%, something like that, of their rates go to that for mitigating purposes on, on the, the archery of the Hunter, Hunter. And that gives you the ability to go in there and do a lot of these physical works. Now, they were notorious for doing chain mesh and uh, mm. um, uh, rock revetment, all sorts of... And, 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 and as soon as you Don't start, say willows. I know. They oh, look, they did poplars and willows. And, uh, and I'm, I'm going, on a, limb, I'm going right. on a limb here. And I say... <laughs> Not a willow. Any, any vegetation is better than no vegetation, yes, Stephen. Yes. I think that's yeah. Um, yeah. A, a valid point to make. Now, here, mm. a lot of money was spent in this, uh, yeah. this, this one here. Um, yeah. uh, and we've actually put some... Oh, there's some wonderful terms. You know, it, 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 they get into... To rock groins, they do brush groins, they yeah. do rock sausages and retards. I mean, why wouldn't you be a, a yeah. hydrogeomorphologist with these sorts of structures that you can build? But, yeah. But with any of them, yeah. there is immense, there's expense and there's risk, yeah. isn't there? Yes, there is. There is. So, so with that that funding there, it said it was actually it's actually in the uh, the Water Act. It's part of the Act. act there is flood mitigation scheme for that. The hunter and uh, the government puts uh, for every dollar that they they raise in that they put three dollars in the government do and it's statutory legislation. There, well, that's so. not right, Stephen, because we can't access that. They yeah. not, many years ago we got them to come over the range to do a what we called a demonstration. Yeah. But yeah. now, Steve, we're actually, we want we're, soft options now. We want to try soft options. And the, the best soft option, Stephen, vegetation. Vegetation. In fact, all the engineering works is really just there to last as long as you can get decent vegetation, which was yeah, the which yeah. didn't quite happen here. Yeah. Look, so we're looking for those rock revetment works. We could be up to in a, in a site there go to two hundred thousand dollars rock revetment works. Obviously, you can't do much of that. But if your area is doing there, you're limiting the grazing for fencing, strategic fencing, uh, off-stream watering, and vegetation improvement. And, and establishment in all those areas there, you're getting, I probably hate the word, but you're getting bigger bang for your buck. It can help more people out. You can help the system out more more as a whole in a shorter period of time. Definitely. definitely. So it's, um, you know, as, as, as the money spent in fencing will go a lot further than sort of some of these hard options. But, gee, they're good fun to do, Stephen. Look, um, I spent a lot of time um, in those and... Uh, um, being quite creative. Look, we've, 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 time marches on, and so just very briefly, if people are interested, I thoroughly recommend them to to see if they can get hold of um of that book by by um, Tiggy Fullerton. And if you are interested in rivers, perhaps one of the best um, sites. Uh, Swan Lovett's got a uh, she runs the Australian River Restoration Centre. Uh, based out of Canberra, and there's some really good. She's got a really good site. Excellent, uh, excellent site. Excellent. excellent site. I'd say yes. yes. I would go. You're excellent. excellent. I think we could we could raise her her terminology. You're excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, and she started this rivers of carbon um, approach, which that that's um, uh, certainly worth watching. And 
I, just very briefly before I get cut off. Um, oh, gee, we got. If you want to do some questions, I'm sure Sarah would be only too happy to to take them, and they're her contacts. Now there will be a an, an, an next one. Our team are doing the next Q and A as well, and Leonie Coleman is going to be talking about um, the Guida wetlands. So that that should probably be fairly factual. Well, that'd be that'd be worth listening that'd be to. Certainly worth that would be to. worth listening. That'd be that yeah. prime time, I reckon. So we're going to continue this down at the. I think we should go and have a counter lunch, and if people want to join us there, I Sem think that sounds very good. Yeah. Just remember, yeah. River Health, River Health River starts Health. at the top of the catchment. Ground, ground cover, cover and ground cover tape. and more ground yes. cover. Slow yeah. the flow. That's it. Do That's that. about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Slow the flow. What's that one? Q and A series by Caleb. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs>